Hi there. In this lecture, Bobby Fischer is playing white against Sharav Perevzav. Fischer actually had some difficulty, apparently, according to Yasser Sowen, an amusing story. Fischer asked his opponent's name a few times. Uh, what? what? <laughs> you know, like three times, and then just wrote a Mongolian. Yeah, I, I, on his score sheet. So Bobby Fischer versus a Mongolian. Yeah, Fisher should have just asked him to put his name on the score sheet. It's very strange. Anyway, so this was apparently the start of this game. So after that, uh, introductions to the game. Yes, names written on the score sheets. E4 from Bobby Fisher. And uh, Sharav for short. I'm going gonna, gonna to call him Sharav. Uh, Knight F3 uh, from Fisher. D6 from Sharav. D4, C takes. We have a Sicilian defense. And the dragon variation, bishop e3, bishop g7, f3, knight c6, queen d2, black castles, bishop c4, knight d7. This is a very interesting continuation. It seems a little bit risky, though, to be using this time for this maneuver, but actually it's got an interesting point. After knight b6, bishop b3, knight a5, there's a big threat of, in a way, of knight c4 to grab this dark square bishop. Fisher avoids that with queen d3. Is it really that bad, white losing the bishop here? It kind of takes any fun out of the position. If white loses that bishop and then the other bishop, uh, white can't claim for a, a, a very big advantage, even though it's, it's an interesting position still. Here is a good advantage, but black can actually, at this point, uh, instead, of bishop, instead of queen takes f5, black could play bishop takes c3. And this is only a small edge for white, so yeah. But that would be a, a pretty dull continuation of this game. So queen d3, bishop d7, h4. Yeah, and it looks as though this is a very, very scary for black's king safety, this whole opening. We see rook c8, not just the dragon, but the dragon being used like this with, you know, without a defensive knight on the king side, essentially. If h5... You know, white could actually just try and blast through with g4 and then h5. White's just blasting through. It is a big advantage for white. King safety is a major factor here. So anyway, rook c8, and we have h4, knight b c4, hg. And here, black must actually, it seems, play f takes to be able to stay in the game. But black played h takes g. As an example of f takes g6, bishop g5, White could set up a good position like this, so protecting the bishop, but keeping an eye on e7, and with an idea later of playing eventually, uh, sometimes knight d5. This is uh, a position in which black's still in the game. It sort of justifies the whole c4 blockade, being able to take away from the center without that diagonal being so painful. That would be a, a kind of justification all this positional play here to be able to play this f takes but the way it's played with h takes just makes black's king safety a lot worse we have bishop h6 and even worse now it made it even worse after e6 black must play it seems here e5 so for example bishop takes g7 dropping the knight back and here, after knight d5, queen c5, as an example, white at least has a good grip on d5, so can claim an advantage, a big position advantage at the very least, even though the king is, is living for a bit and the queen can't get onto these dark squares. This is just better for white positionally. But this, e6, it makes things worse. It weakens key dark squares. This becomes a very fawny position. If there's a pawn coming in on dark squares or dark squares generally look compromised here. And we have f4. And it looks as though, yeah, this is very, very scary. Okay, e5 is played. And Fisher plays a very instructive attacking move after e5, which doesn't just weaken d5. There's a key point here to be made by Fisher's next move. What do you think Fisher plays in this position if I give you five seconds to pause the video? You really don't want to mess with Fisher. It's essentially, you know, almost like a, 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 an old version of Stockfish. It's, it's like a computer, Fisher. And this is a very tactical scenario where king safety is very bad for black. Fisher plays now knight f5. It's a real crushing move. 
bishop takes f5 is played if g takes the point is queen g3 and if queen f6 this doesn't help because of knight d5 and now if the queen tries to stick around then there's knight e7 check and instead of taking the queen which is great you know this is even stronger bishop g5 check and then rook takes h6 it's all devastating basically so anyway knight f5 so g takes is a very bad idea so we have bishop takes f5 e takes f5 and now black is in no position really to set off tactics but tries to with this next move knight takes b2 and it looks like very interesting hold on that's fisher blundered here because this it, it looks like a forcing move it's queen and rook have been forked c3 has been undermined if the king takes b2 e4 ouch has fisher just fluffed this up because this is attacking the queen and it's opening up an attack against c3 however however guess what fisher plays in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video there's a beautiful tactical move very juicy tactical move it's played here i hope you spotted it it's bishop takes g7 yeah just offering the queen up we have king takes because if e takes it's not just a, it's a poison queen because of f6 this would now threaten rook h8 chat mating and this is hopeless for black you know check there's only a few spike checks and black's going to get mated so yeah black's actually lost a piece and this was virtually forced actually because if queen takes e4 had been played well bishop takes c4 is not that pleasant for white at all here best is c takes i mean this would make things even worse for white a takes queen a5 for any queen a1 this would be a total uh turnaround scenario where black's actually uh slightly better here for the record but if white's uh, white still though if uh, in the game after c takes and this this situation white has still an advantage in a way white's attack is still a bit stronger than blacks but anyway all of this is just totally bypassed with the much stronger bishop takes g7 this is a truly strong move one which creates irreversible damage that's so strong when you look when you try and look for a good move look for a better one and this one causes maximum irreversible damage this bishop takes g7 with this big threat of f6 so black is just has just lost the piece and worse now after knight takes e4 there's a threat of a big form form of f6 the game ended here if knight takes b3 black resigned if knight takes b3 f6 check queen h3 and this is mating on h8 so queen takes f6 knight takes king g7 rook takes d6 is um is a winning position for white so anyway yeah uh <laughs> it's a crushing game uh from a chess perspective and um yeah fun story there about Fisher not understanding the name uh yeah it's i believe it's sharav sharav Purezov. it's what's it sharav Purezov. anyway uh please excuse the pronunciation issue if there is one there i'm not entirely sure actually myself now but uh okay it's an instructive game let's stick to the chess it's an instructive uh hack attack game where i think fisher is able to show sometimes that you can't push him around tactically just by attacking his queen he's going to have all his options open tactically because he's like a computer <laughs> he's looking at all of these different options and there's a beautiful one beautiful one that existed that in response in response to this queen attack he created his own much bigger idea of mating the opponent's king so i thought an instructive tactical moment there at least and the general knight sack prelude was quite crushing as well the knight f5 in response to that e5 so e5 is not just weakening d5 it's weakening f5 the attacking player needs to make note of that careful note of that that uh, a committal decision like e5 an irreversible decision has tactical drawbacks especially in these dragon lines okay thanks very much hi guys 
If you enjoyed this video lecture, you might want to get more at my course, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it, and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link. You know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.